Hello everyone. Today we are at Bowers, Pennsylvania. Uh, the antique show and everything else, and I'm really, really excited for today. Uh, I get to interview the guy that I've been looking forward to meeting for a very long time. And here, for the first off thing that we're going to show is... The mini vehicles. Which I, I looked at, and they, they are neat. And then I got stuff over there I want to walk over to yet. My dad's kind of walking away without me. So when you keep your cool, or your drinks cool, and you want to go somewhere, there you go. These are neat. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> and if you want to take your dog places, that's the one to use. We're gonna walk on over here. Oh my goodness. We're going to start down here, well, just going to show off the, the good stuff of the show, really. There's a lot of great stuff here, though. Yeah, train set up over there, very nice. Here's something I've never seen before. Well, I've seen a real mower before. I have, like, what, four. That one there is 1952. There's a snowblower? Yep. Self propelled mower, 1976. 1978 Cub Cadet, never seen anything like that before. We got a whole Cub Cadet line up here. Wheel horse. Nice, nice tractor here. Anyhow, so that's, that's it for this section. I'm going to go ahead and go on to something else now. Here's something. I would love to design one of these someday, or make one of these. Seeing them is pretty neat. For sale, oh boy. Yellow, red, and orange, and blue. Yeah, they have those. What's up? 
water pump with an engine on it. Here's something interesting. Does it say what year? Nope. Interesting. Oh boy. I better go up here quick. So like I said, I'm just showing off the highlights of the show here. We got a lot of little lawnmowers here. Little lawnmowers are probably my favorite. Alright. Alright, so uh, you guys just wait and not change all And I'll be right back with more. Here's something else. A little wheel horse with two wheels in the front. And you got little pedal tractors there. Hit miss engines. Oh boy. Got a lot of stuff and there's stuff over there yet. Everything looks very nice. Everyone has everything painted up and restored very nicely. Hey, what? Yeah. That, yeah, that's a Speed X smaller than mine there. That's an S14. Mine's an S17 or 18, one or the other. Nice. Here's the one that sounds nice. You can barely hear it. Okay, never mind. When it pops, you can hear it. <laughs> this one here, you can barely hear. There you go. Except for when it pops, probably. That one you can barely hear. That one, too. That one is actually pretty cool. Oh, look at the little one. That's adorable. Two, two little, three little ones. There's one back there too. Do you mean you can see her there? Ah, it's a blurry. I don't know. Looking good. I like these. That one sounds nice. You can barely hear. It. Hmm. All right. Here's a drill on a hit and miss. The way the belt works is interesting. Way it over the last place it does. And there's another drill. Ice cream maker. I'm still looking to buy one of them. For sale, eight hundred dollars. No thanks, but I'm good. What are they making? Is this also an ice cream maker, or what are they making on this one? Oh. I don't think it's ice cream. <laughs> There's a small ice cream maker. That's for if you just want to make some for yourself. What are you brewing? Oh, there's a butter churn. What do you call it? Oh, like butter churn. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, I never saw one of them before. Yeah, that's one of them. That handle's on them just a regular oh, crank oh, handle. Oh. You just turn it. Uh huh. Hmm. Now we know. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. neat. Take a lot of time for this stuff. Oh, that's how the engine with the butter churn gear on it. So it's going on it real fast. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's a reduction gear. Yeah. Otherwise, if I have it to that point, oh, it yeah. spin the barrel you'd have, apart. You'd have cream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there'd be something going on. <laughs> yeah. More like wood pieces flying, probably. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. It'd come apart. Yeah. Here's something I have to get a video of. This thing here is a small John Deere. And when I'm talking small, I mean very small. Uh, the tires are below my knee, like, a lot. The front of it's only about above my knee. Jeez. And he has to use, like, a cap or something for the exhaust pipe. Instead of a can like you would use for a normal tractor. You got a cap. 
That thing's pretty cool. And here's an international. Oh, I didn't see that one over there. Here's an international one. What engine does that have on it? Probably a Briggs. Oh, he even gets a little wheel. I wonder if that even spins. Oh, it looks like it does. International. We got a little farm all over here. And I tell you, the way people build these things, I'm pretty impressed. Like, I feel like I would really want to take this thing for a spin. It's got a little Briggs on it. Very nice. Yet again, little cap, not a can. Oh wait, that's that's a push mower engine. That's, that's a push mower engine. On it. That's how small it is. Holy smokes! Well, how about that? Oh my goodness. That's that's amazing. That's that's cool. Here's some uh, army jeeps we found. There's a trailer back there. That the red part needs to be body that you get out of it. That is neato, I tell you. See, they come in a crate like that. I didn't see these. Go ahead and pause and read these if you can. Pause and read that one. Pause and read this one. That one just says please keep off. That one just says please keep off. But these ones down here. Pause and read those two. They're, they're interesting. it goes, but it's quite interesting. Very nice to see the show. Um, I like this. It's for sale. If anyone's looking for anything, there you go. And here we are, guys. The stand that I've been waiting to see. The four-cylinder bricks in Stratton in person, I tell you. to stand right here and look at it. Oh, my goodness. That's the, that's the four-cylinder Briggs over there. You don't see him around anymore. Oh no, he's over here. There's a fan that carry a lot of stuff, and they said they were packing light this time. Holy smokes. That's one just like what I have. guys so they're gonna attempt to jump start the four cylinder Briggs they said the battery's dead so they're gonna attempt it no promises he says Oh, all right. 
If you heard like a glimpse of it. <laughs> but it is interesting. Anyhow, we are here at Bowers, Pennsylvania, finally, after a long time, and today we have Mike here How's it going? with the four-cylinder Briggs & Stratton engine. Uh, I don't know how many horsepower is it. What is it? Well, it's hard to say. Originally, each engine was about a horse, so you can say all combined it's about four, four and a half horsepower, all said and done. Um, you know, it doesn't run with the governor right now, so it's not really useful for, you know, any kind of stationary use, but it runs well as it is. You know? Can't start it right now, unfortunately, like the cranking battery said. So, yeah, not going to do anything with it right now. <laughs> but, Are you going to eventually get a guy with jumper cables to try to come over? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, he'll come over and we'll fire it up then. Yeah, I don't know. But, 
were able to start it earlier today on a little jumper pack, but that, now that's a day. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's not, it's not charging the battery very well unless we rev it up high. We don't, we don't really do that very often. Very much, so. Yeah. We're going to see if we can locate the jumper cable and go from there. So how did you manage to time this? Well, uh, you know, the, the crank timing you know, was based on however most little four-cylinder engines are. You know, the crank, well, the crank together is, is not that difficult once you get it straight. The cam track, it requires a little bit more patience to get the cam lobes clocked correctly, being that it's four cams welded together. Um, and the ignition timing is just done pretty much by eye, you know, initially. And right now it's running about maybe five degrees worth of advance on it. But really it's just, it's just done by trial and error, you know. Now, I also noticed the uh, distributor cap. How how was that? Well, the distributor we got from a friend of ours, it, the little Delco area distributor, came up with a little Chevy uh, car in the 20s. So, uh, well, luckily we, we had that. Yeah, he gave it to us. But, you know, we thought it, it fit the engine pretty well for size, for one thing. And, uh, you know, as far as setting the drive up for it, I had some gears around at my house and uh, managed to find a two to one uh, drive ratio. So it's driven directly off the crankshaft. And uh, again with the timing, it's, you know, it's arbitrary. So you just set, the, set one gear here and set the other gear on the distributor and line them up. There's no really timing marks or anything. Now if you had to take it apart, I'd make marks on it so it would go back together the way it runs well. But, you know, you pretty much just set it and see if it runs and adjust it a little bit one way or the other. But that's about it. How is setting up the carburetor? Cause that looks pretty interesting the way it's set up there. Yeah, the carburetor is actually something we picked up at a show. It's a small you know, Italian-made carburetor. Um, the manifold wasn't that bad to build. It's a copper pipe uh, uh, soldered together. A little bit of uh, body filler in there just to make it you know, flow nicely. Uh, on the outside, of course. Um, but that wasn't too bad. All the flanges are proper, just so it could be soldered together. Um, like I said, there's no governor on it, so it's, you know it was easy, an easy setup. Just bolt up a carburetor and, and go with it. Uh, it supplies the engine pretty well. Uh, you're able to idle it down, rev it up. It's got a good range of RPM, so it suits it well. Hmm. Right, okay, so something something else that caught my eye is the oil things down there with the bolts in them. Is that what that is there, where you put the oil in at? No, you actually, there's a dipstick that we, in, well, we engineered into the unit uh, on the opposite side. These bolts here are just what secure the block to the sumps here. Now, any brake bypass or 6S or any number of other brake models have this. It's the mm -hmm. Secure this cast iron in the base of the aluminum. And this is all obviously welded now as one piece, so, so are the, so are, the uh, are the oil sumps. So there's another bolt on the other side that you can hold it down for them. So that's what those are original. Hmm. So, like I said, a dipstick uh, and the oil, which acts as the oil fill. Uh, that's something that brakes never put on these engines, you know. We made the dipstick ourselves, and uh, actually, when we were working on the blocks, we uh, on the stumps, we cut the threads off of an original cast iron stump and used the plug to make the cap for the dipstick. So, uh, cut a hole in the back block on the other side and welded that uh, threaded portion in to make a dipstick. Hmm. So it's that crap. Steve, come over. All right, here we go. Which is this right here. Oh, okay. You know, Briggs never had that, so we just, uh, but this is an original drain plug, or an uh, original fill plug, so we just, you know, drilled it and put a little piece of metal in there and made a line for the oil level, the high mark, <laughs> so that's what we're filling, and there's a drain plug at the bottom. Nice. And also the cover there I like as well. Yeah, that's something they ever made. Uh, came out pretty well. Yeah, 
too. The gas tank's off, actually off a Rio engine. <laughs> we just had it laying around. Yeah, it's all that. Yeah, yeah if, if you guys want to see this being made, go to 805 Road King's YouTube channel. They got a whole like series on how to build it. Mike's there, of course. Yeah. yeah. So what's your YouTube channel again? It's Small Engine Mechanic, all one word. Okay. Yeah, yeah I was wondering. I, I couldn't remember off the top of my head. And I think I think the guy actually came over with a uh, a jumper thing actually. Yeah, let me go see if he has it and see if we can start it. All right, I'll wait right here. I don't know if I'm recording when you look in the mirror. Uh, yes, I am. All right, so this is the ending part of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you watch the entire thing, don't know how long this is going to be until I edit it. But um, I had a very great time uh, meeting everyone, Road King and Mike. <laughs> uh, very good time. I got to talk to them a lot more than I did in the video, and it was a lot of fun, and I got to see a lot of great things that i never seen before. Uh, unfortunately, the Briggs did not run, of course, but you can always go to Road King's channel and watch a video of it running, or just simply just come to Bowers, or uh, there's one in Jacktown in July coming up that you can also go to and see his uh, Briggs run as well there. So I hope you guys enjoyed Oh, also, before I go. Okay, so I didn't upload anything yet on this, but I will. I'm working on a small Briggs engine right now. I broke all the flywheel fins off, so spoiler alert to uh, that video of uh, taking the, the flywheel off, but uh, I got a new flywheel, it's probably covering up my face right now, so, um, very great place, very great place, I had a very great day, and I thank my dad for taking me, and I'm not going to show him, of course, because, you know, but they actually did a face reveal for my YouTube friends, so that was great, and of course my brother, which is behind me, Ryan, you want to? Hello. You can show your, you can like move over into the camera over here. There you go. Uh, you didn't get anything at the flea market, but we, we had a great day. So thank you so much for watching and take care.